Bunny Pounds with Christians Engage coming to you with another edition of our conversations with Christians Engage. We are so close to a general election. This is our moment. This is the time for the body of Christ to wake up and take ownership and stewardship of our culture and our nation in this hour. This is one of the most important elections of our time if you believe in biblical values. And we're all watching um, with bated breath um, as Amy Coney Barrett is, you know, before the Supreme Court and these amazing things that could really change um, the course of our nation um, as it relates to the pro-life issue. So I want to talk about today with a couple of my friends, what is the church's responsibility as it relates to the pro-life issue? Um, we have a mandate, um, according to the Bible, that babies in the womb, pre-born babies have a right to life. We believe in the sanctity of life. We believe that the Bible clearly defines that. Um, I recently saw a poll by George Barna that said 42% of Christians in America believe that the Bible is ambiguous when it comes to abortion. Um, I don't know how that's possible. I, I don't think people are reading their Bible. But I'm going to get into this with State Representative Matt Schaefer and also Brian Christensen from Watermark Dallas, who has partnered with Human Coalition to write an amazing curriculum. So I'm going to greet these guys and then we're going to run into this amazing topic so that you are fully versed on it before you walk into that polling place. So State Representative Matt Schaefer, how are you? I'm great, Bonnie. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, we are excited to have you. Um, Matt serves on our advisory board for Christians Engage and has been a state legislator in um, Tyler area, Smith County, woohoo, East Texas. We love East Texas. And he is just a champion for the unborn in Austin. So we're really blessed. I want him to share some of his story and all of that. So Brian, just so glad you could join us from Watermark Dallas. Um, say howdy to our friends. Hey guys, Bunny, thanks for having us. And Representative Schaefer, thanks for uh, being on as well. Thank you for serving down in Austin. We are so excited to talk to you, Brian. You and Brian Fisher with Human Coalition have written an amazing curriculum for the church. So I wanna start out with Matt. Matt, let's just break into uh, what's going on in the body of Christ as it relates to this issue. What um, moved you as a strong believer in Jesus to really take up the mantle to fight for the preborn in Austin? Well, my first term uh, serving down in Austin was in 2013, and I had been pro-life uh, my whole adult life. But I had not delved deeply into the issues to where you really understand the details and understand the relationship between what the Supreme Court has said uh, in cases like Roe v. Wade and what the states can do. But my first year as a freshman in the legislature in 2013 was when Wendy Davis uh, put on her pink shoes and she stood on the floor of the Texas Senate to try to block a bill that just moved the timeline back on abortions uh, and when they would be legal in Texas from 24 weeks, which is very far along, to 20 weeks, uh, we know scientifically at a minimum that babies are feeling pain at 20 weeks. And so abortion was legal well beyond that. And so uh, we had a bill that among other things, it said abortions would be illegal at after 20 weeks in the womb, okay? And Wendy Davis uh, stood on the floor of the Senate to try to run out the clock on that bill. And she gave this famous filibuster and the media loved her. And what happened down in Austin at the Capitol was uh, the color of the pro-abortion crowd became orange. And people flooded the Capitol by the thousands, by the thousands. and came down there and I, I was there, my wife was there and we listened to what they were saying. And we listened to uh, the arguments that they were making and the vile things that some of them would say. And it realized you just, you almost, it's like you came face to face with uh, an evil influence. And uh, it was later that even some people from Tyler organized five charter buses that came 
Catholics, Protestants, they, they paid it for it with their own money and flooded the Capitol then in response with people wearing blue shirts. It was the symbol of uh, those who wanted to stand up for those babies. And from then on, I, I knew this is a real fight that when you vote for someone to go represent you down in Austin, that they can have an actual influence. This is not something that, oh, well, the Supreme Court's made a ruling and there's nothing you can do. No, there are things that we can do and we can challenge Supreme Court rulings just like they did for slavery. Um, you know, Dred Scott decision, these things that those Supreme Court decisions ultimately fell because the public's opinion changed and the legislatures passed bills and Congress passed bills that challenged old thinking, uh, unscientific thinking even in the case of abortion. Uh, you know, sonograms were not common uh, or even in practice in uh, when Roe v. Wade was uh, decided. So much has changed. Uh, we want to push even further. Next session, we're going to be trying to push it back even further. Now, we want abolition of abortion. I, I want that. But we have to live in the real world where we try to make uh, steps towards that. We want to pass the heartbeat bill. If the heartbeat is detected, the baby should be protected. And that heartbeat, that little tiny, really, really, really fast heartbeat starts at about 16, 17 days after conception. Unbelievable. That's before, that's before most women even realize they're pregnant, that there's a human heart beating inside her. Um, and every bit of evidence, every bit of scientific knowledge, medical knowledge tells us that's a human being inside that mother who is made in the image of God. Um, you know, and you look at what the Bible says about the poor and the orphan. Who is poorer than a baby inside her mother who's been taken inside a Planned Parenthood clinic? What's a better definition of an orphan than a mother who has signed papers uh, consenting to hand over her body and her child to the hands of an abortionist who's gonna put surgical instruments inside her body and stop that heart that was beating? That baby is a poor, orphan. And what does James chapter do command us to do? To come to the aid of those in that distress. Okay, this is not a question of whether this is biblical or not. It is completely solid, unequivocally a biblical command for us to protect innocent human life in the womb. So good. So good, State Representative. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we would look at Jeremiah 1 that God ordained and, and, and set apart Jeremiah as a prophet in his mother's womb. When we look at uh, Psalms 139, that we were knit and fashioned together in our mother's womb, right? That he knew us. He knew our, our laying down. He knew our rising up uh, before we were ever born. When we look, I loved when you brought up the idea of of, you know, a Jesus in the womb of Mary and Jesus in the womb of Elizabeth. And I mean, I'm sorry, John the Baptist in the womb of Elizabeth actually leaping, right? And Elizabeth calling her Lord, uh, Jesus in the womb who was yet to be born, her Lord. Uh, such a powerful thing in the New Testament. And we see that throughout the scriptures. So Brian, talk to us for a minute about the church getting educated on this issue? What are some of the things that you're seeing um, in a local church um, that concerns you as it relates to the life issue? And how are y'all solving that at Watermark Dallas? Yeah, sure. That's a great question, Bunny. Um, I think it's important to take a step back and to take a quick history lesson to uh, go back a few years to when Roe v. Wade was happening um, in the 60s and 70s. Um, it's... it's um, pretty interesting and, and uh, sad that a lot of your mainline uh, denominations really didn't speak out about this issue. Um, quite, and to be quite frank, I think the only main denomination that did was uh, uh, the Catholic denomination. And so, you know, whether it was the Baptist or the Methodist or, or, or Presbyterian, a lot of them just stayed silent, if not uh, even worse, um, you know, applauded Roe v. Wade. And so the church failed there. Um, and so what we're trying to do at Watermark is to empower the church to take, it, take ground here. Um, we realize that pastors are so busy um, and they're doing 10,000 things. They, they, they just don't have the bandwidth to 
to pick up the shield and take this on. And so what, what I'm hoping to get across to your listeners and to the church leaders, as well as the lay leaders in uh, the churches that are listening to you is that um, I want them to feel empowered to take this up, uh, up upon themselves to um, say, pastor, please empower me and let me take this on. And right. we've developed some great resources uh, that we're hoping to share with anyone uh, that wants to uh, just, whether it's learn, uh, teach community groups, uh, whatever it may be. But the, the, the point is, is that uh, it, you cannot be silent on this issue. Um, you know, I think back to, um, you know, whether it was the um, slavery movement and William Wilberforce, or whether it was the Holocaust and Corey Ten Boom or uh, Diedrich Bonhoeffer. I mean, in 20 or 30 years, I want to uh, look back and say, you know, who was I? What did I do? Um, will I be a William Wilberforce or a Dietrich Bonhoeffer or a Corey Ten Boom, or will I be silent? That's right. Um, and, so, and, and that's what we're hoping to get across. It's so good, Ryan. So good. Yeah. I mean, we're lacking a, uh, a depth of discipleship in the church right now. And it's time for us to be mothers and fathers of the faith um, and to really share the word with people and give them tools uh, to do that. And Watermark, you guys have deli- uh, adopted a whole curriculum. It's extensive. It's called More Than Abortion, Equipping the Church to Be Pro-Life. Um, such a powerful thing, 120 something pages of a curriculum developed for local churches. And I pray that pastors and lay leaders and people around this state that are listening to us um, would reach out to you for this because we have to start, you know, we can teach about a lot of fluffy things, you know, there's so many things, you know, we can talk about our success. We can talk about business. We can talk about all these things, but it's it's important that the church start delving into some of these issues that we don't want to delve into sometimes because we don't want to deal with the um, backlash from it. But really God's touching women's lives that have their lives have been touched by this issue. Um, he's touching men's lives that it, their hearts have been touched by this issue. None of us are without being touched in some realm. Either we have a family member, we have a friend, or we ourselves have had an abortion or know somebody who had an abortion. And God wants to bring healing and deliverance and take the shame off of this issue um, where we can walk it out and be effective. So Matt, talk to us a little bit about stories of people that have been affected by this that you have come in contact with and how you've walked that out um, with a heart of humanity as a legislator even. One thing that is coming up now in our culture is uh, abortions to uh, end pregnancies of babies that have disabilities, that have uh, defects as we would uh, look at them with fleshly eyes. And so Uh, I have been able to meet with mothers and actually meet their children that they made the decision after a doctor told them to get an abortion, to to carry on with that pregnancy and to bring that child into the the world and love them, whether it be Down syndrome babies or or uh, babies with other types of chromosomal disorders. Uh, These are beautiful families that, that God um, has blessed and given us. And, you know, I want to go back to, you know, what we're facing, which is an election. And there is no government that's not instituted by God. But God is very clear throughout scripture about what he expects of rulers and kings and judges and those in authority. He expects them, number one, to worship God. I mean, this is the first commandment. So do we, as leaders? Do we worship God? Do we seek his righteousness? And when rulers do not seek God's righteousness, do not seek to implement his justice in the way they govern, what what follows that? Judgment, discipline from God. It is a pattern throughout scripture with Israel, with all the tribes, uh, that it is very clear when a nation, when the rulers act unjustly, when they do evil in the sight of God, when they ignore his commands, there will be judgment, not just on individuals, but on nations, on nations. We have to take that seriously as a people. God has instituted a government by the people for us, 
And so instead of a, a king at the top, we have the people at the top. The people are sovereign. And so the people have a responsibility to cast their vote. Will they do that for people who line up with what God says about someone who's in a position of authority? Do they love God? Do they seek justice? Do they seek morality? Do they come to the aid of the poor and the innocent and the defenseless? Coming to the aid of the poor and the defenseless and those without a voice is a biblical command for those in authority. That's, that's God speaking to Matt Schaefer as someone who's been entrusted with this great responsibility. And so I take that very seriously. And what I am begging people to do is to take it seriously as a voter. So good. I mean, I loved how you said, I'm begging them. The reality is, I mean, the spirit of God is crying out, right? Um, we are ambassadors for Christ and we're pleading on them. It's time to be reconciled to God. It's time to hear the good news of the gospel. Um, the reality is God wants to draw our, our nation to repentance. He wants to continually bring us to a place of healing and restoration. His blood is enough. Um, my friend Lisa Libby Ryan has an amazing story. Um, you can check out her I Am Second video of the abortions that she had and the things that she suffered, but yet God redeemed her life from the pit and put her in a great place. And so, Brian, talk to us about some of the people at your church, um, people that come to the initiative and get touched, um, you know, kind of put a human um, feel to this uh, with some stories there at Watermark, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the life initiative started, um, as addition, uh, originally as an adoption ministry. And, uh, then we decided to take on a, um, post-abortive ministry. And what we decided was, you know, we realized we'd never wait until a child, uh, you know, needs to be adopted to begin caring, to begin caring for them in the same way. Why would we wait for a woman to have an abortion to begin caring for her and the child as well? And so we decided to go upstream and one that starts with education. So educating the church, but uh, the piece that you asked about is, Hey, how are you touching people's lives? We have a whole team of, of women that are ready to walk alongside uh, uh, women that are, that are pregnant, that, Hey, that are ready to guide them through the pregnancy, ready to walk them through that, mentor them, um, whatever that looks like, care for them. Um, and they're, they're just uh, ready to care for these vulnerable women that have nowhere else to go, no one to turn to. Additionally, um, there is the reality that there are men and women that have had abortions and they're hurting. They, they are hurting so much. And, and we have a post-abortive ministry just to bring healing and freedom and restoration to those men and women through um, through the truth and love of Christ. Um, there is no sin that is too great for the love of Christ. And, and we make that very clear. God is, God is not mad at you. God loves you. And we're, we're, we want to make that very, very clear. That's really good. You know, um, the blood is enough. The blood is the cleansing power. Um, nothing but the blood of Jesus uh, can take care of us and cleanse us from all sin. And so um, we're going to the polls in the next, you know, very few days. Uh, some of us are already voting right now. Um, Matt, talk to us for a second about primary foundational issues that should influence our votes. Um, I like to talk to people about why I, pr I vote for pro-life candidates. My issue is if I am uh, if they can't get this issue right for me, I don't know how they're going to have any wisdom or discernment on anything else. If they don't esteem the sanctity of life, how in the world are they going to dig through budgets and educational shortfalls and all the things that they have to deal with, with any kind of wisdom? So talk to us a little bit about that. What are some of the things that people say to you um, when they go to the polls, how, how you communicate to them to esteem this issue? Often we hear that, oh, you just care about babies uh, in the womb. You don't care anything about them once they're born. But if you look at the Texas budget, if you look at where we spent our energy, um, there's a quite a different story. The simple truth is that every pregnant woman in the state of Texas receives health care and uh, postnatal care 
and her baby will then get free healthcare for up to a year after birth, regardless of income, regardless of citizenship, regardless of whether you're here legally. That is a pro-life position. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars of your taxpayer dollars taking care of women who do not have the finances to get maternal care. We make sure that they do. No one is turned away. You go to any clinic in Tyler, Texas, uh, and you're gonna find a way to get your care. Um, I think also when you look at someone who disregards this issue of being pro-life uh, and, and the abortion issue, you also find that they were willing to deviate on other issues where God has spoken very clearly, uh, whether that be uh, issues regarding gender or marriage um, or stewardship of resources. These are types of issues that are we have principles that we can draw very clearly and plainly from scripture. And uh, oftentimes if someone's not pro-life, um, they're also not in favor of uh, marriage as God designed it. So there are many issues that get off the rails once you get away from God's design. That's good. Brian, talk to us uh, a little bit. What can an individual person in a church do to really make an impact on this issue? Um, you know, could they start a, a home group? Could they lead a Bible study? Break that down for us. How can they go to their pastor and say, I want to make a difference? Sure. It's a good question. And it can be very overwhelming. Uh, kind of where do I even start? This is such a, a you know, complex issue. Where, where do I begin? I, I think you begin first by um, raising your hand, um, and that's and saying I'm going to stand in the gap. Um, the Bible commands us to do that, um, whether it's with uh, 50 people or or just yourself. Um, and so I would encourage you to stand in the gap. Uh, as as I said earlier, our pastors are so busy, and um, I would encourage them to to reach out to us. We would love to help you, whether it's uh, giving you online access to our curriculum whether it's helping you find a pregnancy resource center that's in your area to partner with, whether it's uh, setting up a mentorship uh, program uh, for vulnerable women that have nowhere else to turn. Um, I just encourage you to start because uh, what you don't want to do is have um, uh, just so much overwhelmingness uh, to you that you just don't, you just don't begin. And, and it's just another weekend. It's another week. It's another year that um, that babies are being aborted. And and so I just encourage people to raise their hand and stand in the gap. How do people get a hold of your curriculum and, and touch base with you guys there? Sure. We create our curriculum not for Watermark, but for the church. And so we want to share this with people. We we partnered with Human Coalition to get this out to as many church bodies as we possibly could, whether you're a church of 10,000 or a church of 20. We don't care. Um, so you can get in touch with us at the Life Initiative at watermark.org. That's great, Brian. Thank you so much. What a great resource. Uh, and we're going to probably get those from you and, and start distributing them out as well. So Representative Schaefer, leave us with a final thought on how a Christian can make a difference in this issue. You can find out what the people believe about primary issues, about fundamental issues. If a candidate believes uh, in protecting life in the womb, for example, then that's a pretty good place to put your confidence. There are pretty stark contrasts between candidates on this issue. Uh, there, it's usually not close. It's usually there's a, a position uh, way on one side and a position clearly on the other. So start there as a primary place to see what a candidate believes. That's great. Okay, so everybody go out and pray, vote and engage. Vote for pro-life candidates. Remember that this is a very, very important issue that you need to take Jesus to the ballot box when you go. Um, it's very, 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 can I say any more varies? Very important. Um, so we need to be prayerful and, and remember who we're voting for and really do the research and dig in on this. Um, okay, gentlemen, before I let you go, we always ask a funny question or just, you know, kind of get to know you question on our podcast. So, so since we've been in this weird COVID season, right, 
if you could go to any store right now and just wander around with no children, Matt, um, no distractions, you know, hey, I'm going to go on a date. I'm just going to wander around a store um, with my wife. What would that be? Uh, well, I should tell you that my kids actually came into my office no less than four times while this was going on. So uh, they're ready for me to. They're so uh, sweet. Computer. <laughs> um, uh, is this a date or am I by myself on this trip? Whatever, whichever one. You're by yourself. Just whatever you're. By myself. You're relaxing. Uh, it's, it's our local gun store. Uh, if we're together, we would probably go to an outdoors um uh, store where we could look at different things. We both, my wife and I both love uh, camping and getting outdoors. So that would probably be fun for both of us. That's awesome. Brian, what about you? You're going out by yourself, hanging out at a store. I would probably go to REI, um, just outdoors. I'm going on a ski trip uh, here soon. And um, they would probably take my money because I would spend way too much there. So I think they'd be happy to have me. All you outdoorsy people. I'm the pure one in the world market girl. So I like wander around there for fun. So, well, awesome. Well, we're all really, really missing being out all the time. I know we're all getting out more, more, and we got to help our local economies get back and, and uh, buy more stuff, right? Buy more stuff. Don't go in debt though. Okay, well, this is an important election. Thank you guys so much for being with us today, talking about how the church can really engage with the life issue. It's time to pray, vote, and engage. Connect with us, subscribe to this podcast, and get this out to people that you know might be wondering, is this the most important issue on this election? Um, I think right now with the courts and the balance, I think it is. So uh, with that thought, get this out to people and have them experience what you're experiencing at Christians Engage. Thank you so much.